Hello, and welcome to the new Right-of-Way Utility and Leasing Information System, or for short, RULIS. We will be guiding you through a seamless process of registering for an account, all while ensuring you are well-equipped to use our platform. Let's begin by walking through the RULIS registration process to set up your account. Type in your email address. This will be your primary means of communication with RULIS. Click Next and then register now. The Create Your Account screen appears. Now fill in your details, from your full name to a valid telephone number. Crafting a strong password is crucial. Ensure that it is between 16 to 32 characters and that it's unique from the last 24 passwords you have used. The minimum wait time after a password change to modify it again is just one day. Remember, frequent logins ensure uninterrupted system access to keep your account active. Now we're going to click the Create Account button. Once you have filled in your details, check your email. You will receive an email confirmation containing a security code. Enter this code to validate your email and proceed. Take note, if your employer's company is already registered with RULIS, you should register under the company's organizational unit. If not, you will be prompted to register the company. On the other hand, if you are an independent consultant, you will register as an individual. Click Continue. When accessing the system for the first time, and perhaps the first couple of times after that, you will receive a pop-up window designed to help new users get acclimated with the system. Within RULIS, you have the flexibility to register as an individual or as a part of a company. To begin, you can either search for an existing company using the filters or opt to create a new one. We are going to create a new contact by clicking Next on the bottom of the screen. To set up a new contact, choose your profile type. If you are representing yourself, click on Individual. If you're part of a company, click Company. Remember, fields in red are mandatory. Enter the name of your company. This serves as the primary identifier within RULIS. Make sure to put the name of your company and not your personal name. Next, complete the contact information. Provide your full name, role, and contact details, ensuring you have filled out all necessary fields. Proceed to input the company's address details. Type in the mailing address, zip code, city, state, and the company's primary contact details. Now, let us set up your organizational unit. By default, there is a pre-filled name. Simply highlight and overwrite it with your desired name, then save. Upon completion, you will encounter a couple of messages. Carefully read and click OK to acknowledge them. From the home page, initiate your permit application by clicking on Apply for a Permit. Choose the permit type relevant to your needs. For this demo, we are selecting Communication. In the Project Information page, you can select the utility owner from the drop-down. Here, you will recognize the organization and contact we established earlier. Now, we will log out of this account. For consultants to link to a company, they must first register in RULIS. Let us create a consultant account first. Click Ping Identity. Type your email address in the bar and click Next. Fill out the form with your first and last name and a valid telephone number. Pay close attention to the password policy and ensure your password adheres to it. After crafting a compliant password, click Create Account. Check your email. There will be a security code sent to verify your email address. Input this code in the provided space and click Continue. 
Once verified, you will encounter a critical message. If your employer's company is already part of the system, register under its organizational unit. If not, you will be prompted to register with the company. For those not part of any company, you'll want to select Individual Registration. Now we can click Continue. Note that there are occasional prompts upon the first entry into the system or after the first logout. Having created the consultant account, it is now time to register under a public utility company. If we are looking for an existing company or organization, we would use the search filters. Otherwise, click Next to start a new registration. For our purposes, let us create a new one. Click Next. Now, you are faced with two options, register as an individual or as a company. Since we're registering as a consultant, we will select Company. And it's time to fill in the company's contact details. Fields marked in red are mandatory. Start by typing the company name, then proceed to the Contact Information tab. In the Contact Information tab, input the necessary details such as first name, role, telephone, and email. Proceed to the Company Address tab. Remember, red fields are mandatory. Fill in the mailing address, zip code, city, state, telephone, and email. Now, let us define the organizational unit. Click on the Organizational Units tab, then select Edit. You will notice a default organizational unit name. Highlight and delete this. Enter your desired organizational unit name and click Save. After saving, you will receive a message box. Click Save. You might encounter a second message. Repeat the process, read the message, and click OK. To link your organizational unit with a company, start by clicking Organizational Units and Linked Companies. Within Rulus, utility consultants will only see their own profiles, not those of other utility consultants. Also, if the consultant submits the permit as a utility owner, the permit will be returned. To link your unit to another company, select an organizational unit from the left panel. Then head to the right panel and click on the Linked Company Organizational Units tab. Please note, only administrators of an account can request to be linked to another company. Type the desired company's name into the Companies and Individual field to find the company. Click Apply next to the chosen company. Verify the connection by comparing your current organizational unit to the company's listed unit. Now, add a message for your request. Remember, fields in red are mandatory. After typing, click Save. Upon successful submission, a green message will appear. Double check the status of your link request by clicking Pending Requests. If you are operating as a utility within Rulis, there is an essential step you will need to execute. This will allow consultants to manage utility permits for you. Let us take a brief detour to understand the utilities view. For this demo, we are switching to the utility side. This is essential to approve consultant access. Once logged in, you will want to review notifications, especially those related to consultant access. This ensures consultants can work on permits for you. Check notifications by clicking the bell icon, read the message, or head straight to organizational units and linked companies. On the left side, select the folder under Organization Chart. Then, on the right, click Pending Requests. Review link requests under the Linked Company Organizational Charts tab. To accept, click the blue check mark. To decline, click the red X. For this demonstration, you'll be clicking the blue check mark to accept the request. A confirmation box will pop up. After reading, confirm by clicking Yes. After successful linkage, you will see another success message. That was a brief view from the utilities lens. Now, let us return and continue our journey as a consultant in Rulis. To apply for a permit, 
click on the Apply for a Permit button. Next to your desired permit type, click Create. For this demo, we will select Communication. You will now be taken to the Project Information page. When applying for a permit, you should now be able to see your company in the drop-down list as a utility owner. In the Utility Consultant drop-down list, you will see yourself as the consultant you registered as earlier. If there are multiple people helping to manage the permit application process, use the feature at the bottom of the page. First, check the box to let other people manage this application. If you have already registered authorized users within your organizational unit, you can select them from a list. Otherwise, enter one or more email addresses in the field provided. Separate multiple emails with a comma. Once you have filled out all necessary details on the project information page, click the Apply for a Permit button located on the bottom right. You will receive two confirmation messages. The first one states successfully saved, and the second one confirms project created. Now, we are transitioning to the Creating Work Area page. To begin, click on the green button that prompts you to fill in the data. You are now on the Define Project Boundaries page. Use the search and zoom functions to locate a specific work area which is available on the left side panel. Draw the work area by clicking on the Draw Polygon tool on the top right corner panel. For help using the drawing tools, click the button How to Draw on the Map. To begin defining your project boundaries, you want to either zoom in to your desired work area directly or use the magnifying glass to search by route number. Activate the Draw Polygon tool to define your work area by clicking on the tool icon once. Please note, you cannot be more than 300 feet away from the road. With a request to cross a TxDOT drainage easement that exceeds the 300-foot limit from the road, have the work area encompass the drainage ditch, show the alignment, and add alignment to within 300 feet of the road. When you have completed your selection, click the tool icon again to deactivate the Draw Polygon icon. Proceed by clicking Next to move on to the next section of this process. A confirmation box will appear in the top right corner, indicating you have successfully set the work area. Once the boundary is saved, you will not be able to modify this in any way. If changes are needing to be made to the boundary, a new permit will have to be created. For extremely large boundary areas, the option of splitting the permit into multiple permits is allowed. On the final step page, provide a detailed work description. Include any notes and the text.connect utility ID if you have it. Clicking Continue will automatically save your input. A prompt will guide you to draw the utility alignment. Use the tools on the top right or import data as needed. Click OK to proceed. The next screen instructs you to draw the utility design. Use the available tools to represent your utility work. Once you have drawn your line or poles and components, it is time to select attributes on the left panel, which match your project's specifications. For our demo, we are applying for a communication permit. Select attributes that fit your utility type, such as feature type, component, and more. Required attributes are marked with a red star. Once set, proceed by clicking Next. To finalize this phase, click End Design Draw Phase. This is your application summary page. Here you can view the current status of your application. Click Continue to proceed. On the main application page, the status bar shows your progress. 
the steps remaining before the utility company's acknowledgement are also visible. There are several steps left in our process. Red nodes indicate the required steps. Let's begin with the general application questionnaire page. Fields in red are mandatory, and depending on your answers, you may need to provide additional details or upload files. Once complete, click Next. In the Plans and Traffic Controls section, select all six boxes if all items are represented and verified. Next, you will select Choose Files to upload your documents. Note the maximum size for plan uploads is 50 megabytes. You will know if your document was uploaded successfully when you see a check mark under Status. After addressing the traffic control questions, click Next and you will see a successfully saved message appear. Make the appropriate selection under the Abandonment section. Click Next to continue. In the Requested Exceptions section, remember that any exceptions should be justified and approved by TxDOT. Selecting Yes will require additional details. After making your selections, click Next. Now, the Contacts page. Fields in red are mandatory. Begin with the emergency contact and contractor details. Put in the name, surname, telephone, and email for both emergency contact and contractor. Ensure the contractor's email is registered in the RULIS system. When entering a permit on behalf of a third party, the utility owner contact is mandatory. Fill in the details and ensure the email address is from a registered RULIS user selected from the drop-down list. You can add multiple contractors using the plus button. Similarly, for non-mandatory contacts, click the plus button to add as many as required. On the time frame page, take note of the start date guidance. Use the calendar tool to select your proposed schedule time, capturing both from and to dates. It's understood that these would be estimated dates, but they should be as close as possible to the actual time frame for construction. Therefore, we suggest you add realistic time frames, which include enough time for reviewing the requests submitted. RULIS will automatically progress the permit from construction in progress to construction finish and final inspection according to the end date entered. Enter the total construction days under Duration. If needed, add notes for clarity. If there is a red banner message, click it to be directed to the section requiring attention. This is your moment to review, correct, and finalize your submission. You can attach documents on the right side. Use the Preview or Download Preview options to check your application and attachments. You will see a message box for document generation. Click OK to finalize. Once satisfied with your application, click Send to Utility Owner for acknowledgement. This also saves your application process. Congratulations on completing your permit application through RULIS. We've designed this system to be as seamless and efficient as possible for all users. For questions and concerns about RULIS or your permit, please reach out to your district permit coordinator. Remember, keeping an eye out for regular updates and communications will be essential as your application progresses. Thank you for watching, and we wish you success with your utility project.